Okay, folks, we're back. I'm Rich Folley. This is AWP 2017. You're watching PBS Book View Now. I'm sitting with Kristen Radke, who's the author of a new graphic novel memoir called Imagine Wanting Only This. First of all, beautiful cover. Thank you. Very compelling. Uh, we were talking earlier uh, that this is uh, my hometown of Detroit, yeah. which, of course, I'm you know, excited about. But let's talk a little bit about this as a memoir. You, you, first of all, when did you realize that you had a story to tell of your life and that there was something that you wanted to do? Yeah, I, I mean, I think the, the memoir part came a little bit later. I was, the project at the beginning was just about abandoned cities. It was just about how many, uh, you know, how many of these places can I research? How many of these can I uh, you know, go to? And how many stories can I find? And then I think as I was working through it with my editor, he was, he was really saying, you have to find sort of the, the personal thread that brought you brought you to this project. And so that was, that was definitely sort of a secondary element when I was writing the book. Mm -hmm. So then when you found that, yeah. the death of a, of a beloved mm -hmm. uncle that sort of led you on this, um, this trip tick around yeah. the country to yeah. visit things that had been left behind, yeah. ruins, um, cities, buildings uh, that had fallen apart, fallen down. Yeah. What is your fascination with the idea of things that have broken, things that are gone? Yeah, I mean, it was really, it was really um, his death uh, right after his funeral. I, I was in Colorado about, actually it was 10 years ago today, which is very strange. Wow. Um, I was, when I was driving past to the, go to the airport and I drove past this abandoned mining town, which I had, you know, sort of never thought about or seen before. And um, I feel like, especially today, we've sort of developed this real cultural obsession and fascination with ruins, I think probably perpetuated a lot by Detroit. And there's been this whole resurgence of, you know, urban explorer photography and things like that. Um, but I think we like seeing, I think we like, and we're also terrified about seeing decay, um, not necessarily when it's like our own bodies, but when it's in sort of uh, represented in the world around us. And when we see contemporary ruins, it's so different from, you know, the Parthenon or the Acropolis or anything like that. It's like, this could happen to any, any city that we are living in now. And more quickly than you think Exactly, sometimes. exactly. Yeah, I mean, some of the cities that you visited in the book and that you, you show, Gary, Indiana, Detroit. Yeah. Detroit's now rebounding, but there's still buildings that are sitting in the middle of the, of the city that have, you know, that are just broken down yeah. and there are still hulks that yeah. sit there invisible. Yeah. Um, but they call that, in some cases, this ruin porn. There is a yeah. fascination. You're yeah. not alone in your yeah. fascination. Yeah, I think it's really common. Yeah, what is it you think about that sort of urban explorer element that's, that so captures people's imagination? I mean, I think it's especially, well, I would say it's American beat just because we're, we're such a young country, and so we haven't really been around ruins in the way we have in so many other countries. But if you look throughout history, you know, sort of how every, every civilization thinks they're the last, I mean, I think... Uh, that's a really common thing, you know, from, uh, it's always supposed to be the end times, right? I mean, we might be really getting close now, but, um, you know, the romantics, uh, we're always painting ruins and, you know, we've sort of, I think, always idealized them throughout history. Might be really getting close now, but, um, you know, the romantics, uh, we're always painting ruins and, you know, we've sort of, I think, always idealized them throughout history. Yeah, there's a line um, that you write in the book and I think I wrote it down, um, that says, we forget that everything will become no longer ours. Yeah. And I think you write it a couple of times throughout the book and yeah. it captured my attention immediately because we do forget that. We yeah. do forget the temporariness yeah. of things. And in that regard, there's a sort of a loneliness that sort of pervades the book as yeah. I read it. Um, as you're going on your own journey through these places and then as we're thinking about the places you're visiting, where did that come from for you? It's a good question. I mean, I think, um, you know, I grew up in a family where we, ne we didn't travel that much. We really spent a lot of time at home. We really cultivated and worked on like, you know, um, I, I remember being in, I have a photo of me in a closet that was being built while the house around me was being built. You know, home was so important and, and it still is. But this idea that we're, we're building these things that become so um, impermanent and so, become so intangible, I think is, is, a really lonely, is a really lonely thing. And a big part of this is obviously your drawings, your, yeah. your illustrations. Yeah. It's a graphic novel. Mm -hmm. So um, when you started to tell this story, so much of it feels like photographs and yeah. things that you've taken. Are there real photographs that you were working from? Or is this yeah. from your mind? So there are some, you know, we have the, I, I use some historical photographs throughout the project and I didn't really want to try to redraw that history. I kind of, 
uh, liked the idea of including those photographs. And I have a few family photographs. But yeah, it's really hard, especially if I have to, you know, one of the daunting parts about writing this book was drawing characters that looked the same over 300 pages. So it was really hard to do that without um, a photo as a, as a sort of working point. Yeah, and there's relationships in here too. Yeah. I mean, you take off on this journey with, you know, there's a boyfriend yeah. and, and the whole thing happens and there's, there's your uncle, obviously, yeah. you talk about a lot. Um, did you have to talk to everybody, letting them know that you're writing a memoir so, and that you're going to put their lives in the, into a book? Yeah, I mean, that was a really challenging question. I think it's something everybody who writes about their life, um, even if they call it fiction, has to really think about and, and decide and rationalize for themselves. But it was really a case-by-case -case thing, you know, and I hoped that the way that anyone represented, they wouldn't feel, you know... I mean, I think Joan Didion said, uh, every writer is always selling someone out. And I'm sure I'm going to get a, a, some nasty letter at some point. But... Um, you know, especially in the case of my uncle, for me, that was just about sort of like paying tribute to him and his life. But it was still a really, it was a difficult decision. Yeah, you've worked in publishing for some time. Yeah. Do you consider yourself, and you, you see what's happening in this world, the, the sort of mixing of mediums that people yeah. are bringing to the, to the uh, page now. Do you consider yourself a graphic novelist? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, because we were talking earlier about the sort of life of, of graphic novelists and the sort of culture that exists, yeah. you're now part of that culture. Yeah, yeah. And it feels still, it's, I, I got the sense that it still felt really new to you, sort of being able yeah. to say that word. Yeah, I mean, it's strange. It's sort of like at what point can you say that you're a, a writer after your first book, you know, because it's, it's, the, it's the one project, but I do have two more graphic novel projects that I'm working on. So hopefully there'll be there'll be more. Are, we, are they memoir as well? No, I'm, I'm moving away from that for a while. That's really interesting. <laughs> yeah. um, we mentioned that you're here at AWP yeah. with your publishing company, yeah. Sarah Band Books. Yeah. You're the managing, managing editor. editor. Can you talk to me about that? That's a whole yeah. other part of your life. You're yeah. juggling two sides of publishing. Yeah, right it's now. really interesting. You know, this was at a, a, a Pantheon Books, a great uh, a publishing imprint at Penguin Random House. And then I work for a press called Sarah Band, which is based out of Brooklyn and Louisville, Kentucky. We're really small. We publish 10 books a year. Um, a lot of poetry, a lot of the kinds of things that Penguin Random House doesn't publish. So it's really interesting, I think, to move between those two spaces. Yeah, they are totally different. And the fact that you can do them both together at the same yeah. time, yeah. Um, a challenge, obviously, but it yeah. sounds like you're getting the best, best, best of both worlds of publishing. I hope so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So talk to me, too, about as you look forward. Um, that's an important part of what you do. You're, mm. As we were standing there, you were pointing out some of your authors and yeah. like giving me sales pitches yeah. on their books <laughs> and telling me why they're so great. Yeah. I mean, that's something that's not going to leave you. Obviously, yeah. you're interested in literature in general yeah. and obviously your own titles. Yeah. I mean, um, I feel like bringing great work to the world is our job, um, kind of whether we make it or, or whether somebody else does. So. Yeah. Now you're about to hit the road and talk about this book. Yeah. You have scheduled events. Yeah. Um, it's very personal. It's your yeah. life on the page. You're going to get questions. You're going to get people <laughs> like digging in deep yeah. and really yeah. understanding more about you. Yeah. What does that feel like? Really weird. I mean, I think there, there's also a way in which, you know, I, I know a lot of writers talk about this. After you write something that's happened to you, it, it feels so removed in a way. Like the, the, my writing of it has almost replaced the memory of it in a lot of ways. So in that way, I feel like it's sort of a protective barrier because I feel like I'm talking about something I wrote rather than something I lived. Yeah, you, you write about health issues and yeah. heart palpitations and the death of family members yeah. and personal relationships yeah. and very personal feelings about, you know, your own journey in yeah. life. Um, then now, um, and you do it in a way that feels like, as I'm talking to you, that maybe this isn't even you. There's some <laughs> sort of difference, but, but as we're talking, it is you. Yeah. And it must be sort of a fun feeling. How about your family? Yeah. I mean, they've been so supportive and great, so I'm, I'm really lucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I like to now talk too about the just structure and the time it takes mm -hmm. to put a to put a book like this together. Yeah. Uh, writing and drawing, I mean, sometimes can take an immense amount of time yeah. when you're doing it together. Yeah. Tell me about the process for you. Yeah. So I mean, th really, the writing was by far or the um, first part. Like the the writing was so much research and all those things, very difficult and and for me much uh, more challenging than drawing. Um, it, it just takes so much mental energy and it's really hard when you're juggling a day job and then coming home and having to sort of start fresh. But the writing, um, the writing or the drawing, excuse me, was the thing that really took the longest. I mean, it, years and years and years of just drawing. How long were you working on this project? It's a, it's, it's a hard question for me to answer because um, I feel like my whole life, you know, but uh, really seriously, like four or five years. And tell me about your own design background yeah. and, and, and artistic background. Yeah. 
I mean, I was like failing algebra class in high school because I was drawing in the back of the class, you know, but it took me a really long time to um, figure out that I could put writing and drawing together. I love that you can. <laughs> and I love that there's a format that allows you to do that. Yeah. And I love that you're still bringing out great poetry Thanks. and literature into the world, too, with your other yeah. job. Kristen Racky, good Thank luck with so everything. Much. Thanks Thank for you. Being Thanks here. for having me.